Four years ago, intrepid explorer Rian Mansa fulfilled a long-time dream to impact young environmentalists from around the country. The man who once cycled around Africa and rode across the Atlantic to New York took five matriculants to the coldest place on Earth to teach them important lessons that may one day save our planet. It's now a well-established and highly successful program that each year sees five matrics given the opportunity to experience the wonders of Antarctica. In December, Massa got to share it with them. The largest, driest and windiest desert on Earth. It's breathtaking. It shows humanity's insignificance and nature's grandeur. A beauty that will stay with you for the rest of your life. This is Antarctica. My name is Chloe Diedrichs Badoris. I entered for this experience because I want to see what I can do to positively impact the planet and how I can encourage other people to do the same. I'm Demakata Suride. I've always wanted to go to space, but now that I'm in Antarctica, I get to learn about the environment and how we impact it. I'm James Pringle, and I think I try to live as sustainably as possible. I can make a difference by going paperless myself and doing work in my local community to really aid in sustainability. I'm Swashefetile. I'm from a small rural town situated in the Eastern Cape. I'm hoping to get the experience of the life there, the landscape, um, the environment. My name is Kira King. Going to Antarctica means that I'll come back with stories to share to the youth to make sure that they can make a change too. For the past four years, Rian Mansa has been bringing five metrics to this white continent, believing that educating and empowering the youth can make a difference. Mansa, a veteran adventurer and environmentalist, knows getting people, especially the youth, excited about the environment can be quite a challenge. Taking five metric students, we take them to Antarctica and we try to find the next environmental rock star. You have to make it attractive for young people. You can't have this mature concept and idea that is so many layers thick. We need to convince the millions that um, saving the environment is for their good and it's actually something they practically can do. Okay. okay, this is cold for real now. Today's youth are arguably more environmentally aware than past generations. Many manage to mold their interests and beliefs into passion projects that bring about change. Chloe, a sports fanatic, chose to redirect her energies into serving on the Joburg Junior Council's Environmental Committee. I'm really passionate about the environment and it's actually been such an incredible experience because we've worked with the SPCA, we've done a recycled runway where we've had Greenpeace Africa as a guest speaker. We've really just done so much to try and benefit our community as much as we can. If we really want to push for more climate action, we really need to start telling people how it affects them because only then do they really care. Becoming environmentally aware these days is as much about seeing the world around us as it is what we learn from books. James was deeply impacted by the drought in the Western Cape in 2016 and 2017. Climate change is real. There's something that is wrong and there's something that needs to be done. And I think in Antarctica, seeing that effect happen effectively in real time at an insane rate, it'll help to validate that feeling that, you know, we need to do something. Since I'm in love with science, yeah, I always say to myself, like, we must bring innovative ideas to make the environment more conducive, more sustainable. For his science project, Sebatle turned to nuclear power, more specifically, the waste generated. His research led him to microorganisms that show resistance to radiation. They are able to consume their metals. 
they can extract the electrons from their metals while consuming them, um, producing an electric current that can be used to produce electricity. For Kira, though, environmental issues are much closer to home. I'm in the water and on the beach a lot, and especially in Durban, we have lots of problems with litter on our beaches and the E. coli levels. When the ocean's unhappy, I feel unhappy. So my passion for the ocean made me feel like I needed to make a difference. So she reached out to SANCOB, the foundation for the conservation of coastal birds. Penguins are indicator species, so if the ocean's unhealthy, then the numbers of those animals will drop. To raise funds for SANCOB and its vital African penguin program, she paddled with her hands from Belito to Durban on a prone board. So initially we thought it was going to be 40 k's and then during my paddle it was all good and then we reached the Mgeni mouth and it clocked 40 and I still had to get to the harbour wall and I was oh. thinking, oh my gosh. Antarctica is also home to penguins. In fact, it's the only place on Earth where emperor penguins breed in the wild. Marine scientist Mareka Muson has been a Matrix in Antarctica expedition lead from the outset. She's also the brains behind the human penguin waddle, involving a run or jog throughout the night to raise money for sand cob. Yeah, we managed to rake up the kilometers, and I think collectively we must have done well over 150 kilometers. But individually, every student contributed. They were real stars. Who really needs sleep, am I right? Um, it's to raise funds for Sam Cobb. I managed to do 21 Ks, and it was just really special just to be able to do that and know that you're like making a big impact from the small little thing that you're busy doing. Antarctica has experienced air temperature increases five times higher than the mean rate of global warming. Studying what happens here enables scientists to more accurately predict future climate change. Absolutely incredible. Right now, I am standing in an actual glacier. We've been hiking and we've gone through and inside a glacier, ice, snow everywhere. It's absolutely beautiful. Also known informally as the ice tunnels. <laughs> it was incredibly surreal and coming out on the other side, it was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you could see the sun kind of shining over the hills and it was, it was insane. I loved it. All this time I have been learning about the environment and how we affect it. But this time it was me actually coming here and seeing the beauty of this place, seeing how much learning we can get from just this one place. The first step on the ice was also really amazing because it was so different to what I thought. So going through the ice tunnel, the colors of blue were amazing. And just being in that space where the topography is so different to what I expected. Uh, my favorite part of the Antarctica is the sun that's never set. It's so real, like, it feels like I'm in another planet. What's been your highlight for this particular trip? Creating something, and, and it's not um, just in the, in the form of uh, these five coming together and um, talking about the environment and hopefully planning to make change. What we actually did was put up a solar system that is going to make change in this base, in this camp that hasn't had any green energy for over 20 years. The Matrix rolled up their sleeves and helped install a system that, if replicated across a few more of these containers, would make it possible to switch off the generators for good. Once installed, it was down to yours truly to flick the switch from generator to solar power. I'm about to switch the lights on and make history. And our five Matrix are geared up to go and change the world to preserve a healthier, happier planet for generations to come. You have 200,000 people that are visiting the continent right now, but like less than 1% visit deep field Antarctica. And this is where these students come. They are going to sit in boardrooms where people are going to be waxing lyrical about their knowledge about the environment, and not one of them would have gone to Antarctica except that student. There's some power in there. 
I just have a new fire in me and I can't wait to go out there and tell my story of Antarctica and how beautiful it is and how we really need to protect the ecosystem here just from our own homes. It's past 8 p.m. and the sun is shining bright as ever because it's summer in Antarctica. Let me tell you, it is freezing. I am layered up and layered up, but enjoying the sun. As much as I thought I was prepared for the 24-hour daylight, when it's sleeping time, it kind of messes with your mind a bit. But what a treat. What a magnificent place to be in. And whatever expectations I had about being here have been far exceeded. And like the rest of our planet, it's a place worth saving. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.